to go on tough tracks. The world champion Equalizer put the new big foot in its place. One week ago, Equalizer is first to the finish line again, but disqualified for starting too soon. Today, the tiebreaker. Superstars of monster truck racing are once again in Memphis, Tennessee, doing battle in the Mid-South Coliseum. Hi again, everyone. I'm Scott Douglas here on Tough Track. Dennis Anderson, the driver of the Grave Digger, with me as we're back for our third straight week in Memphis and ready for some more intense competition. Dennis Anderson, the big question, especially with a lot of talk and a lot of guys doing a lot of jawing last year, this year, more money than ever on the line in the TNT Point Fund. More prestige, more races. Can you win the championship? Yeah, I really think so. You know, it's just like, a, you know, last year I started out, I, I was running strong in the points. I started out running strong in the points this year, but who knows, you know, we've got to see midway through the season. I might come out with a new truck. We're working on it right now. I'll do a truck change and, and just take the points right off of this truck and put on a new truck. But I'm going to really battle it out hard. I, I, want, I want that first place this year. The championship on the line every time. Dennis Anderson and the Grave Digger and the rest of the TNT Monster Trucks do battle. We're looking forward to a great race in Memphis. Let's go with Army Armstrong inside the Mid-South Coliseum to get ready for the action. Well, thanks, God, for the third week in a row. We still don't know who the number one monster truck in America is. The reason is Bigfoot and the Equalizer, the two trucks that everybody was afraid of, they've got a reason to be afraid of them because every time we go down to a final round, it's between these two trucks. But Andy Brass, tell us a little bit about this rivalry that's starting to build. Well, the rivalry between me and Dave has, has been building, you know. The two of us have been meeting now for the last couple weeks. First time he's got me, second time I got him. Uh, the truck's been working real well. We've been pushing the truck. We've been pushing the guys we've been running. We've been averaging a, a half to three quarters of a second faster than anybody else, and I think that's causing everybody to run hard. Uh, the first time I met Dave, like I say, I, I, I busted, broke a transmission in the, in the truck, and the second time we just pushed Dave real hard. He jumped the line, and we got him. So now this third week, you're going to see us. It's going to be a close race. Both of us can get the light at the same time. It's going to be good close racing. I think that's going to be the trick is getting the light at the same time because David Morris, your defending world champion, cut that light last week. It was a Eliminated by a foul start, but he was only a quarter of a second behind the awesome Bigfoot of Andy Brass. You guys are kind of the country boys this operation. They come in with a high-tech truck, have everybody worried, but you guys aren't backing down at all. You're still going after them any way you can. Yeah, we've got to hang in there and be real tough and competitive all the way through this 1990 season. Uh, I think we've got the suspension that we've been looking for. Uh, only we're lacking a little bit of horsepower now. If we can get, get the correct amount of horsepower with that the truck will still be real good and controllable, I think it's going to be the answer. Well, ladies and gentlemen, stay tuned because when this show's over today, one of these two drivers will establish himself as the truck to beat in 1990. We're going to begin taking a look at highlights from the qualifying round, Army, and let's go first to Gary Porter's Carolina Crusher. Gary Porter, of course, getting off to a late start, but has quickly been amassing some points, and I'm sure as things begin to even out over the winter, we'll see that Crusher name moving ever onward up the ladder. Well, that's definitely going to be the case. Of gift, as you mentioned a moment ago, it kind of gets overwhelmed with Equalizer and Bigfoot in the three, but that's a good time. Here's Dennis Anderson in the Grave Digger, Marvin Smith, the all new Wild Hair, a popular truck, but the Wild Hair really hasn't been getting the time yet. And the track really works to Anderson's liking, however, a little bit of a problem. He lost the cylinder on that run, Scott. That could really hurt. See it coming out right now? He is in trouble. He's down to seven cylinders right now, Scott. Well, that's too bad because that's a competitive time at 4.09. Notice the chassis, right? Here, those front wheels settle down. This is the ideal track. Very similar to Chicago last year when Anderson dominated with his Grave Digger. However, you can see the problems on Dennis Anderson's Grave Digger. Excellent qualifying, but trouble at the end. David Morris coming out in the equalizer as Morris tries to lay down another sub four second shot. In the pit, working on the Grave Digger. The crew chief struggling right now with that motor, and it looks like a lot of oil leaving the engine. Yeah, they definitely hurt it. I know they've lost one cylinder. You can just tell by the way it's pumping. Speaking 
Speaking of pumping, this kid is throw down. This is the ideal track. Very similar to Chicago last year when Anderson dominated with his grave digger. However, you can see the problems on Dennis Anderson's grave digger. Excellent qualifying, but trouble at the end. David Morris coming out in the equalizer as Morris tries to lay down another sub four second shot. In the pit, working on the grave digger. The crew chief struggling right now with that motor, and it looks like a lot of oil leaving the engine. Yeah, they definitely hurt it. I know they've lost one cylinder. You can just tell by the way it's pumping. Speaking of pumping, this kid is from Tennessee, in Tennessee. The world champion would love to lay down a sub four second run in this qualifying shot. He's capable of doing it. Byron, what's going to happen tonight? Oh, look at this. Beautiful. 3.82 for David Morris and the equalizer. Fast so far, but our next look is going to be at the new foot with Andy Brass from St. Louis, Missouri. Buffalo Tremor will also be qualifying at this time, but nobody expects to see Tremor out qualify Bigfoot right here. Remember, under four seconds, the 382 is your quick time held by the equalizer. Bigfoot, if nothing else, wants bragging rights. Quick qualifying time will give you lane choice for the whole evening. like a rocket shot out of there. Well, we're going to take a moment and determine the brackets as Bigfoot comes across the car's isolated army on a super run. Boy, the truck really runs smooth, son. Here's the Restore Automotive product points coming into today's racing. Equalizer still with a big lead. King Crunch is now into second with Scott Stevens. Digger hangs on to third. Then it's Steve Wilkie in USA 1 and Mike Wine Outlaw rounding out the top five. Currently sixth on the world championship point standing. Dave Weissorek is nightlife. Buffalo Tremor is seventh. Then it's Mopar Magic, Awesome Kong, and Thunder Chicken. But Bigfoot's already knocking at the door and he's only had two races thus far. The Restore Automotive Product point standing. Tough Tracks is brought to you by Micro Machine, the most colossally collectible vehicle in the world. If it doesn't say Micro Machine, it's not the real thing. The score between Bigfoot and Equalizer is one to one. But wait till you see what happens this week on Tough Track. Can you believe a dead heat in the monster's mess? It happens. Bigfoot and Equalizer return to settle the score. This week on Subtract. Not 
enough to hang with the Buffalo Tremor. So Johnny K will move into the second round as Kwasniewski makes it look easy. Playing for keeps never got out of the hole very well. well. One thing we have to do, we have to give credit for playing for keeps. They were involved in a highway accident on the way to this event. The driver's just running, trying to put time and get points on it. So that's kind of a smart move. Now, speaking of move, during a qualifying run, we saw this cylinder go away. And Scott, he's completely lost one cylinder. Going to be running only on seven. So with Digger not at full power, he will still try to knock off Steve Wilkie in USA 1, one of the fastest improving drivers on the circuit. He had big shoes to fill with Rod Liptow giving up that seat in USA 1 after winning the world championship in 88, finishing third in 89. Wilkie seems to get better each and every week, and you know he gets fired up to run against the Digger. Yeah, he gets psyched up, and he doesn't seem to get better. He really is. This guy is coming in, really trying to get into some big footsteps in front of him.
100%. As we look at it again on the replay, we understand that Nick Rossi's truck out of Pennsauken, New Jersey, is having some fuel problems, and Mike Wine's actually lucky he wasn't racing a healthy truck in that round. Let's get the word from Mike Wine on exactly what is wrong with the outlaw and what the prospectus is for him the rest of this night in Memphis, Tennessee. getting enough fuel to the fire. Yeah, and he brought out an interesting point. If he doesn't get enough fuel, he'll hang an intake valve, then you got major problems. The lift the supercharger, like you said, that's something you do not want to do. Talking about do not want to do, neither one of these guys want the other one to put them out. They've had problems all year long. They're not up in a point shape where they want to be. Each one of these guys definitely wants to hammer the other guy. Smith on the right, Clydesdale on the left. Both of them Chevrolet gun. You take the call. Marvin Smith on the Missouri. Wave, 
but then almost blew himself away at first. Watch how close Brass comes to flipping and then barely getting it shut down before nailing the hay bale and the wall at the end of the Mid-South Coliseum. But Andy Brass is no worse for wear. Army's got it. Andy, you take a bad bounce with a new chance and you're in a world of trouble. I think that last run proved that. Yeah, it did. You know, we bet kind of off to the right side and it just it sucked us over there. I'm going to start lining up maybe a little bit to the left on the cars. I've been doing it a little bit because of this track been pulling me to the right. It's just, I don't know if that could be on this lining up wrong on the hill. Andy Brass will bring Bigfoot back in the semifinal round. Now a couple of Chevrolets, the True Value sponsored USA 1 and Steve Wilkie will take our in-truck camera along for the ride here as he takes on Buffalo Tremor and John Kwasniewski. So we'll see the race, then we'll get a look at Steve Wilkie's ride inside the cab. We've already watched Wilkie go through a, a ritual, psyching himself up in that big white truck on the right side. He really gets pumped up. You better believe in what you're doing. Wilkie giving him more speed as he's keeping contact. Watch him. Look at the angle. You can see when you got to look at the crowd in back of Wilkie exactly how bad his angle was. Straight up and down, almost nose diving it, but the wheels, the front wheels were pulling him through and he gets the win. You got a power out in the monster right now. Full throttle is what brings him out. Meanwhile, the Kremer boy, he's got his hand full on the far side. The same problem, Scott. Unbelievable that Johnny K didn't go over that time because he really, watch at the end of the run on the left side of your screen, the Buffalo Tremor, and how much trouble he starts to get in. Just like Wilkie, he high sides it, and then a wild bounce at the end, but the Tremor does not go over. However, the suspension may be a little worse for wear as he really got a rough ending to that ride. The victory goes to Steve Wilkie, USA 1 out of Spring Lake Park, Minnesota. The True Value Chevrolet getting a big win. Wilkie's with Army. Well, Steve, you know how wild your ride runs real thin? Yeah. Okay, right. Buffalo Trimmer had one just like you right next to you. That was scary. Well, that's what's taking, Army. Hey, you, you can't play no games anymore. We're coming on. We're hammering 1,500 horsepower and attacking that hill. And when you come over the hill, you're going to leave the hill. You come and hit the cars like that, and you're going to go nose over. It's that simple, and we just got to learn to deal with it. And when we come back, we're going to deal with even more quarterfinal round racing. We don't know if we can get any wilder than this. But it might. Feel the power, Greensboro, as North State Chevrolet presents the Red Man TNT Hall of March 16th and 17th at the Greensboro Coliseum. See the TV stars from ESPN, TNN, and Tough Track live. Feel three big classes of pulling. Plus the Carolina Crusher, Grave Digger, and Mopar Magic on the wildest obstacle course ever. Plus the World Spectacular Laser Light Show. Then get set for Beastron, the futuristic transformer in its only area of appearance. Tickets now on sale at the box office and Ticketron outlet. Don't miss it! Tough Track and the TNT Monster Truck Challenge at the Mid-South Coliseum in Memphis, Tennessee. We know half of our semifinalists, Bigfoot and USA 1, we're about to determine the other two. Carolina Crusher and the Outlaw in the quarterfinal matchup, then Wildhair will meet equalizer. Now the Outlaw Ford is just now making it to the start line. We know he's been having problems. Army just a moment ago asked Mike Wine about the problem. Mike Wine, you and the crew have been hammering and nailing all day long trying to keep the Ford going. What's the problem? I had a regulator on the fuel pumps. One of them went out on me to me. Instead of, instead of having a damper in there regulating seven pounds of pressure onto it, I'm feeding all of 14 to 15 pounds of pressure to one carburetor. Each round I go outside, I have to pull the spark plugs out of it and literally let the fuel run out to turn it over. Then put the fuel of plugs back in it to start it. So you gotta keep it from hydraulic and the cylinders are just loading up. Yeah, cylinders are loading up with fuel. I'm just trying not to throw a rod and throw it right out onto the track. So Army, we obviously know it's a crippled outlaw against truck. Yeah, he's crippled, but it's like sitting on competitive with the Chevrolet of Gary Porter. There you see the run once again, and Outlaw didn't back out one iota. But 
Crusher able to win. Gary Porter, despite a truck that frankly is becoming antiquated when you consider the state of the art, he continues to run and run well, and Porter is back in the semifinals. Here's the wild hair, beautiful paint design. The kids love the look of this truck. Marvin Smith out of Arnold, Missouri, but I'll tell you, he had better have more than a good paint job if he's going to beat this opponent. It's the equalizer and David Moore. Talking about kids loving the truck, they're going to be able to buy a model of this truck, we understand, in the near future, so all the kids can be able to go TNT monster truck racing with us, but right now, equalizer, wild hair, Chevrolet's a pair, Memphis, Tennessee, green light, there we go. Oh, equalizer came out like a gun. Equalizer beat him over the hole, and that was the difference. He had a full length on him across the hill, and it was all David Morris from that point. Equalizer gets the victory. That's our final quarterfinal round race as David Morris puts away Marvin Smith, and this will allow Morris now to have a rematch with his main nemesis from a year ago on the TNT Monster Truck Challenge, that being Gary Porter and the Carolina Crush. Here we go with the Crunch of the Week. Alert your seats for the amazing Crunch of the Week, brought to you by Micro Machines, the number one colossally collectible vehicles in the world. If it doesn't say Micro Machines, it's not the real thing. Our Crunch of the Week takes us to July 1989, Richmond, Virginia, and watch David Morris and the Equalizer in trouble, and over he goes. You know, twice last year, David Morris had a violent flip like this where he actually sheared off a wheel, but he still won the world championship. This year, several new trucks, including the new Bigfoot, want nothing more than to take that championship away from David Morris, but there's nothing they can do about 1989. This was just one of the rolls and tumbles on the way to a world title for David Morris and the Equalizer. One more time, Army, you were there, and boy, I thought he was hurt. Well, that was a violent flip. It was kind of a sprint car flip. Look at this. He goes over, noses in. Now, pieces start to fly off. That's what made it look so violent. All the fuel's coming down. He's tucked in. The safety equipment all held up for him. That is a heck of a ride in about a 13,000-pound truck. The Equalizer, the crunch of the week. We'll be back with more of the semifinals from Memphis, Tennessee, coming up on the TNT Monster Truck Challenge. I'm Scott Douglas, back with Army Armstrong on Tough Track, the TNT Monster Truck in Memphis, Tennessee. We're down to the final four. What semifinal matchups we have? Bigfoot and USA won, renewed their classic Ford Chevy matchup. And then the rivalry of 1989 is renewed in 1990. Carolina Crusher and the Equalizer, the top two trucks from a year ago. There's Go-Go shaking and baking in front of the crowd at the Mid-South Coliseum. But right now they're shaking and baking over Bigfoot against USA 1. We talked with Andy Brass earlier about any fears that the seemingly invincible truck might break on. Well, my biggest fear right now is, is two things. One, the four-link suspension in the front on the front axle, we've had a lot of trouble when we've landed the front end coming back and hitting, hitting the bottom of the cab. And when it does that, we've been to the lower bar. Now, the lower bar, I, I carry enough spares with me that I can pretty well change one every round. But that, that pose, poses a problem along with uh, the transmission. If I, don't, if I clear the hill, hit the hill real hard, and uh, land all four wheels with the power on, a lot of times we just snap in transmission. We just get too much, we get too much wheel speed when we land and connect and something has to break. Scott, he was talking about that front end tucking under. That's exactly what happened to Scott Stevens earlier. Ford versus Chevy, Bigfoot and USA 1. but between the two most successful owners of trucks. Bob Chandler's Bigfoot, Everett Jasmer's USA 1 is renewed here in 1990. Two years ago, USA 1 beat Bigfoot for the title. Last year, USA 1 was a better truck. This year, Bigfoot seems to have the advantage, but Steve Wilkie's making up some ground. We've caught up with Wilkie in the pit. Let's get his thoughts right now. Well, it's the, the rear tire's hitting that first car again. She goes nose over, and uh, anytime you run against one of the foot trucks, uh, you gotta lay it on the boards and hold it there. And, uh, that's what we did, and she got a little squirrely, but we drive it out. In 1989, Equalizer won the world championship. The rookie, David Morris, got the job done. The man who was the most disappointed of all, this racing veteran, Gary Porter from the Carolina Crusher, who's accomplished an awful lot in his career. But 
want nothing more than the DMV World Championship. He knows he's got to beat this truck and Bigfoot to get it. The truck he has to beat is a rebuilt, a new, and updated version of the Equalizer. The Carolina Crusher we're looking at right now is the same Carolina Crusher we saw last year. Technology, you got to pull for the red truck. Just odds on favorite, you got to pull for the yellow truck. Who's it going to be? Both of them, Chevrolet's got the green. Good lead by both trucks, and a bad bounce by the Crusher gives the win to the Equalizer. That was a suspension race, Army Armstrong. Exactly, exactly, Scott. Indeed, when Carolina Crusher topped that hill, it was the bounce. David Morris was very smooth. Here it is, Army. Now let's watch it. As he comes over, there it is like a trampoline. Sends him straight up. David Morris is in the final. Army, you've got him. Can he beat Bigfoot? It's matchup number three. Who's it going to be? Well, I hope it's going to be the equalizer. I'm going to uh, run this next race. is going to be really wild, I can tell you that. The whole day of monster truck racing has been wild in Memphis. It's about to be capped off with the monster fan. Between Bigfoot and the equalizer, the TNT Monster Truck Challenge returns in just a moment. Second, it looks like 
Boy, there's a strong possibility we actually may have a tie. Now, this has never happened before. If that's the case, they may have to go back to a qualifying time. I do not believe in this sport they're going to make them go and run these trucks over again. So set tight. I'm sure we'll have some replays coming up. We're going to get with the officials. As soon as we do get the official word, we'll get back to you. Okay, Army, let's go ahead and look at one right now. I, I think you can see on your monitor down there that Bigfoot and Equalizer are actually, you know, coming together. And we're going to get access to the TNT timing camera. And next, take a look at that tape and see what the TNT officials are looking at because that's the determining factor right now is if the TNT camera shows either truck even a hair ahead. And boy, you just can't pick it. Okay, now both drivers are looking at this. There's Brassy in the left-hand corner. Neither one of these drivers wants to get the win to the other one. There's a strong possibility, Scott, they may go back and do it again. There's Morris. He can't call it. And he's not going to give it to Brass. Brass, he can't call it. He's not going to give it to Morris. I can't believe what's going to happen. The word I'm getting is they might be going back to the line, Scott. I don't know if we can listen in. The show must go on. That's right. What are we going to do, guys? We're going to run it over, ladies and gentlemen. You hear tracking after Butch Krieger letting the folks in Memphis Now, Scott, this decision was made by the drivers. The drivers got together. You talk about pride. These old boys old Southern style pride here. That machine got locked. Neither one will admit that he's going to give a win to the other one. Scott, the truck circle. Never before. We're going to see some history right now. You know, the drivers in the discussion, from, from what I was getting out of it, Army, was that any time somebody brought up a suggestion of dead heat splitting points, neither camp was willing to accept that. Oh, no, no. Right now, Bigfoot's outside. They Remember Andy Brass earlier in the interview said he was worried about the front suspension. Well, he bent one of those rods. Bob Cameron himself, Mr. Bigfoot, he's here. This is how important this win is. One of these trucks will be the monster truck to beat in 1990. We're going to find out who it'll be in just a minute. Trying to prove who's a bad dog right now. You look at it one more time, and when we come back, we'll break this tie. Exciting as it is here on Gun Track, lots of great action coming up. Hey, with the polls in Greensboro Coliseum, March 16th through the 18th, you'll also see special appearances by Gravedigger, Carolina Crusher, and Mopar Magic. And when the monsters hit Tingley Coliseum in Albuquerque, watch for King Crush, Awesome Kong, Bigfoot, and lots more. It's always the superstars when you see TNT Motorsports live in these arenas all across the country. What well, time to go to work in the Monsters Match Final? We have never done this before, Army Armstrong. We're rerunning the championship because the videotape determined it was a pure dead heat the first time. Well, like I say, ladies and gentlemen that are sitting and watching this telecast, you are seeing history in monster truck racing right now. Neither one's going to give us anything to the other one. I'm going to kick back on the end of the track, find me a safe place to watch this. This will literally be a war. Bigfoot and Equalizer. And again, I want to repeat, Bigfoot has still not beaten Equalizer across the finish line. This will be the fourth time they've matched up. And as dominant as everybody's been talking about Bigfoot, he still has not beaten Equalizer across the line. The only win he's got was the DQ when they claimed that Equalizer jumped the start light last week. And Army, you and I don't believe that was the right call anyway. Uh, that, they missed the call. Like I say, though, we had the advantage of looking at another camera. The track crew did not. Speaking of track crew, everybody in the building is on their feet. It's going to be history in Memphis. Take it, Scott. Ready to go. Big foot on the right of your screen. Equalizer on the left. Watch the red light in the middle. When it goes green, it's showtime. The monster smash. Take two. Chevrolet going against Ford. Look for the green light.
play keeps going. He, you talk about evenly matched. Uh, look at this. And, and the trucks are not doing the same thing, but each works good in their own way. Let's give these drivers a Bush is getting a plot for both of them right now. Bush will be the first one to hear the result. Let's see if we can hear the result. Your winner, ladies and gentlemen, is Bigfoot. How about it, Sean? Bigfoot for the first time. He's coming over to see you, Army, and this is a happy Andy Brad. Ladies and gentlemen, this is an all-American story right here. The man with the dream is on my right, Bob Chandler. The man that took the dream to the winner's circle today. Andy Brass and Andy, it just did not come easy in Memphis, did it? No, it wasn't. You know, we happened to run a, run a dead heat there with him and then turn around running again. We knew we just had to push it, maybe pull the light a little bit. He's tough. Yes, he is. Uh, Dave's been running good all night. We've been watching his times. We was pulling 379. I don't know how maybe we were sleeping a little bit or something because we went down to a 382. We backed up a little bit. Well, congratulations to you and Bob Chandler. What can I say? You had the dream. You made it come true. And you told me earlier, this is just a taste of what monster truck racing is coming to. It's going to get bigger and better as the years go along, right? I'm sure it is. Yeah, there's, there's a lot of other guys building trucks like this. The suspension is the answer. Dave Morris runs suspension. Now, his truck is lighter. That's one of the reasons he got the advantage here today. But uh, it's going to get better and better. It's going to be neat racing. One more time, we're going to get a look at Bigfoot and Equalizer in the final. And Bob Chandler really showing you where it's at, Army. And that is in that suspension. Lots of other guys are getting ready to come out with new trucks. You know, he also says it's neat racing. And that is a fact. A lot of new trucks coming out, like you say. Bigfoot, again, has pushed technology to the forefront. Andy Brass, the winner in Bigfoot and Memphis, Tennessee. This time, a clear-cut victory, as you saw on the replay, about a quarter of wheel length over the equalizer still that really has no impact on equalizers world championship points lead as we look at the restore automotive products season point standing on the tmt monster truck world challenge points battle equalizer the leader king crunch and grave digger are still hanging tough but the difference between them and the equalizer is really beginning to stretch out usa one is hanging tough rookie may be ready to make a run in everett jasper's truck the outlaw has struggled as of late but a good start keeps him in the number five spot. There's Buffalo Tremor at number six, the consistent Dave Weissork at Nightlife at number seven, and look at this. With only three races under his belt, Bigfoot has already moved into the top eight. Now, Carolina Crusher is worth noting. We'll talk more about him in just a second. Thunder Chicken rounds out the top ten. Army, I want to mention Carolina Crusher one more time, because Gary Porter is hanging in there with an antiquated truck when he is able to get a 1990 truck, which isn't that far off. I think Porter is going to be a player this year. Got what you're going to see at the top ten trucks there, seven of them are building a new, and they're going after the big blue. The big blue and the big red. David Morris' equalizer continues to sit atop the world point chase, but here in Memphis, no doubt about it, Bigfoot has third notice. One more time, Bigfoot and equalizer. from Memphis. Next week here on Tough Tracks, we're going to pause to take a look back at what has been an incredible first six weeks of action for determining a new world champion on the TNT Monster Truck Challenge. For Army Armstrong, I'm Scott Douglas. We'll look for you next week right here on Tough